Yeah, you're good. Can you talk a lot of this one? We, Matt and I started deer hunting together when he turned 16. When I first started working in the county, Matt was about 16 then. So he got his deer license, or he got his his permit class, he went to the class, mm -hmm. hunter safety class, and he got his deer license. So a few years went by and David decided he wanted to go hunting with us. I said, well, you gotta go take that class. So he got the ambition, he went out and took the class. So I said, okay, Dave, you got the class. Matt, I wanna make sure you know how to shoot a gun and all this stuff. And I said, I know you took the class, but we wanna make sure. We was down in Des Moines, we picked up some shells when we was down there. So come back and we loaded up the clay pigeon shooter, you know, a few days later. Matt and Dave and I was all together. So took off and went up by Northern Mosher's, you know, that north north of Roger Humphelt's. Yeah. That piece of ground he's yeah. got back there. Pulled back in there and set up the clay pigeon shooter. And I think we had the Mossberg and the Remington. And I had a 20 gauge up there and a 12 and a Mossberg 12. So, and we get everything all set up and Dave's kind of watching us. And I loaded up Matt, Dave's gun. I says, here's the gun. He took it and he says, I says, hey, you failed already. You took a loaded gun from somebody else. You're supposed to load it yourself. And he says, well, you handed it to me. I said, oh, that's okay. So he says, how's this work? And I says, Matt will go up there and he'll load the clay pigeon. When you're ready, you know, you take it off safety and you can be ready. And you just take pull. Matt will release the clay pigeons and you shoot them. So, okay, he went up there first and he has the gun up there. He says, okay, pull. Pulls, you know, and he's bragging about how good a shot he is in that, you know, beforehand, you know. So get up there and that clay pigeon goes long, nothing. So, went through all six shells. And Matt's releasing them. I'm standing over by the truck and, oh my God, this is going to be bad, you know. We're going to lose a lot of deer or a lot of pheasants, you know. So, <laughs> Matt gets up there and I think he shoots a, the Remington or I don't know what he's shooting. But, you know, the Remington holds five shots and the, when, uh, the Mossberg holds six. So he gets up there and he shoots all the clay pigeons. Or maybe misses one, I don't know. I think he hit them all. So then it was my turn. I get up there and I think I hit <coughs> all of them except one. So then David gets up again, you know, and I says, okay, Dave, let's see how you can do this time, you know, and I start to load his gun up. Yeah, you, lo you loaded he, the gun, you ain't let me do it. And he took the gun away from me, he says, I can finish loading, so I hand him the shell, and I said, okay, finish loading. I says, I want to warn you, though, Dave, I says, these are little different shells, and they're a little, they kick a little bit more, too, you know, a little heavier shells for you, so, you know, you will have a little more kick to them, I just want to warn you. He finishes loading it, and he gets up there and pull. No, I loaded up the same same ammo that time. He went through another round and missed them all, you know. Nothing. We're just... <coughs> so we go through another round, you know, and shoot them. So the next time, he wants to load them. So I hand him the shells, and he loads his gun. He gets up there. He hits about every one of them, you know. And so we get done going, shooting them again. I said, Matt, you want to shoot again? Ah, that's okay. So we load everything up, and we're headed back home. We get up by Roger's house, you know, and we're talking. We're driving up there. I said, I don't know, Dave. You better practice a little more. I don't think we can lose all those shots, you know. You miss deers like that, you know. And uh, Matt's sitting in the back. He says, but Dave, what the hell was you shooting anyway? Well, whatever Dad gave me for shells... So I pull in my pocket, I'm driving along, I'm pulling in my pocket, and I pull out a shell, and I says, here's a 20-gauge 6 shot. Well, he was shooting 12-gauges. Oh, well, those are the ones I shot, so I set them over there. I pull out some 12-gauges, and I says, here's some 12-gauge 8s. He said, well, that must have been what I was shooting, and then I dig a little further, and I says, here's some more 12-gauge blanks. And he looked at me and he says, let me see those. And I handed them to him. Well, you rotten sons of bitches. <laughs> you shouldn't blank and you knew it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. We were 
was going back to town and he says, You rotten sons of bitches! <laughs> he said that about two or three times. I can't believe you did that, you know, and Matt and I were just dying of laughter in the truck because Harry shot all the way through there. And he was bragging how good a shot he was and he missed them all. <laughs> <laughs> Shooting blank. Yeah, but you see how good I did when we had the real one. <laughs> and then, you know when I worked for FS and drove the tank wagon? I about forgot about that, yeah. You know when you go down to Melbourne, you go into Melbourne off the... Hart Avenue or whatever that county road is. If you turn off at 330, the first intersection. Yeah, Hart, yeah. Down there by uh, Hart Avenue. Yeah. Oh, the Reckon <clears throat> Tiling. Yep. And you can go past Reckon's and then you pull in there on that one street and there's that old mouse hole. Mm -hmm. Well, I was driving the tank wagon and he was with me one day. So I go pulling down that road and I pull a turn to go there. Dave sees that mouse hole up ahead and we're in that field truck. He says, are you sure we can get through here? And I says, no problem, Dave. So we just almost get right up to the mouse hole. And I yell, ah! <laughs> Did he duck? He, he comes <laughs> around and he ducks, you know. He goes shooting through there. What are you rotten son of a bitch? And I just, he just starts pounding me on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm dying a lot. <laughs> We get into the office and I'm, I walk out of the fuel truck, I'm dying of laughter all the way up to the office and walk in there and the guy says, what are you laughing so hard about? And I just, <laughs> I told him, well, we pulled through here and Dave wasn't sure we could make it through the hole and I says, no problem, we'll make it through the hole. And when I got up there, I yelled, duck! <laughs> David says, yeah, that damn dad of mine. <laughs> So we got the business taken care of. I checked the call list to see what calls I had. Jumped back in the truck and we headed back out. Got right by the by the by the mouse hole and on the radio. They went over the radio. 